Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's CJ from CJ Reads. And we're gonna do Sunday Reads. Just catching up, just catching up. I feel like this is the only kind of video I make anymore. I don't know how I feel about that, but just where I am in life right now. I wanna start off the video with maybe the most exciting part. The Sunny's brand identity is done. Very, very exciting. My friend Megan, who I'll link down below, uh, she's a former coworker of mine at a design shop that we both worked at. She made it for me. I commissioned her to do so, and I'm so excited. We went through a couple rounds of revisions. We like uh, settled on, the brief was kind of joyful, approachable, and something to do around the sun, you know, life-giving. Uh, nourishment, the kind of essential things that the sun does for humans and the world around us. I don't really know why I landed on Sunnies for the name of the truck. I think it's because I'm in Portland and there is no sun, so I'm kind of making my own sun. And I just think it's like a really cute name. Also, shout out to Sunny from a Sunny Book Nook. Yeah, but I'm gonna like put the one sheeter here. I'm probably doing a voiceover. So this is our brand palette. We established some main fonts to use, headline, body copy, supporting fonts, stuff like that. And yeah, kind of like a minimal palette. I think this green is really unexpected and fun. And I like that we didn't go more of like a traditional 70s like desert palette you know what i mean i think this could easily be um a little too kitsch if we didn't have the boundaries on it right um the form itself like the logo form is so cute and expressive and just approachable to me which is i don't know something that became really important i don't it's weird when you're um i i have like a lot of experience buying and commissioning art and design because I do it in my day job so it's funny being the client um and also uh, it was being a client for myself obviously but it's not like one-to-one -one with my own design ethos as you might be able to see obviously I like the design elements that we came up with but I forced myself to kind of not rat hole into like just the one I liked most and considered larger audiences other than myself and had a, like a little bit of a university a universal approach to it so that's some thinking behind the design i also spent some time on the website over the last few weeks and i have three whole pages up yes not to brag um the home page the about page and the contact page are up um so yeah i don't know go to sunnysbooktruck.com if you want if you want to see uh we're officially getting the truck painted this coming saturday we have a color picked out it's gonna be yellow the same yellow that matches uh our branding uh i've commissioned i've reached out to a couple of local sign painters to see if they can paint the logo on the side of the truck which will be fun and then it's time to make like the bookcase boxes in the back i think we're gonna have our first pop-up in portland in march so stay tuned for news on that would love to see you uh also we have like so much cute merch coming i don't want to like blow up my shit and spoil it before it's actually produced i'm meeting with like a screen printer here in the next couple of weeks my other friend carly um who i also used to work at at another brand studio took megan's design system and is making some merch for me so there's gonna be bookmarks there's gonna be a nalgene bottle there's gonna be pullovers. There's gonna be long sleeve sweatshirts. I mean, long sleeve shirts. There's gonna be t-shirts. There's going to be a tote bag. There's gonna be baseball hats. And they're all so cute. Like things you're actually gonna wanna wear. I'm just gonna spoil one of them right now because I think I'm gonna live in this. And it shows us the little Sunny's illustration mascot that Megan made and it's the cutest. So that's fun. Those are exciting Sunny's updates. I know I've mentioned this before, so it's not exciting or cool to talk about, but I'm still really busy at work. 
therefore like not reading a ton um i'm doing a lauren euler themed reading vlog right now which i finished the two non-fake accounts books for it and i'm rereading fake accounts right now my first reread in years and years it's kind of a weird experience um I wouldn't say okay this is weird this is weird and maybe controversial i wouldn't say i'm like loving my rereading experience of fake accounts even though it was one of my favorite books of last year so i have to sit with that for a little bit i wonder if it's because i've been like dictating my reading list for this themed reading vlog and i haven't been able to mood read in a bit and it's just like kind of my last like tick of the box that i have to do before i'm allowed to like pick my own reading if that makes sense at all um but I'm gonna finish it. I'm gonna continue on reading fake accounts because baby's gotta do what a baby's gotta do. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna be a rereader ever in my life and that's okay. I think I need to let it go. Yeah, as for recent books I've been reading recently, they're all for that reading vlog and I don't wanna really like blow up my spot and talk about them because then that reading vlog would be pointless. So I'm not going to talk about my most recently completed reads, but I am gonna talk about the obnoxious spoiled brat rotten don't deserve anything amount of book mail i received over this last week um <laughs> i actually just noticed i had my dad's book called amish justice that he uh picked up at a library sale we recently went to i'm gonna actually put a clip of him explaining the plot to us here because uh it's incredible it's like give me a, a plot summary a plot summary real quick uh, a couple amish kids leave their place in lancaster pennsylvania to run over to philly they got a car that's how hidden. did they know how to drive uh, they've been driving farm tractors since they were young kids oh, okay okay then they go over to philly they get in a fight in a club and a guy gets killed now they got the one amish kid in jail and blah 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 so the Amish kids are in jail now. One for okay. murder. And that's it? Yes. Because they stole a car. No, it was their car. Oh. Because they got, they got in a fight at a club. Why did they own a car if they're Amish? Because they, the one boy, you know, how the Amish boys get. They get a little antsy and they want to leave the farm. You so know? they own cars? How did so, they get the money to own the secret car on the Amish farm? Well, it didn't really go in details in, <laughs> in the uh, book, but I will write to the uh, uh, author of the book mm -hmm. and ask him, how did they get that? Thank okay. you. Good night. Good night. <laughs> okay, so that's Amish Justice. It was not sent to me by the publisher, but Joe Alberts did read it. A lot of these are from Knopf. Knopf had like a banging upcoming releases, like um influencer mailing list come out recently where like almost all of the titles that they wanted that they posted that were available for review copies i was like oh my god i want that so thank you to knopf um one of my fave publishers for sure and i'm excited about a lot of these so the first one is a short story by tony morrison called recitative recitative the beautiful arresting short story by Toni Morrison, the only one she ever wrote about race and the relationships that shape us through life with an introduction by Zadie Smith. So that sounds incredible. How can you go wrong with that? Real slim little guy. Um, this might actually be something fun for me to read today to break up the assigned reading I've given myself. But I'm just super excited to read the only short story Toni Morrison ever wrote. As you guys know, I've been real into her the last year. I recently read um, Sula, highly recommend it. Incredible, can't wait to read more. They could have done better with this cover though. This cover is giving nothing, quite honestly giving nothing. And then from Knopf, I got Hurricane Girl, which is by Marcy Dermonski. Jalen's actually reading this right now. He got the same review copy as I did. And he said that it was a romp, really readable and he thought i would like it so i'm excited for that he did kind of say in tone it was similar to pizza girl which i really did not like as a book so he did warn me about that and i'm interesting i'm interested to see if there is any parallels that hold true to his pizza girl um comparison okay so it's 
the short blurb is a propulsive and daring new novel by the author of Very Nice about a woman on the run from catastrophe, searching for love, home, a swimming pool, and for someone who can perhaps stop the bleeding from her head. It's blurbed by Kevin Wilson who wrote that book Nothing to See Here. I don't know if you guys have watched my channel back then but I read that at the very beginning of my channel. Um, I got a copy from the library and it's kind of this like fantastical magical realism short story about little kids who catch on fire and I kind of thought it was corny and I wasn't really in love with his writing so that isn't like the best person to blurb this book for me but Jalen said I'm going to like it and the and the blurb does sound good. You know I was watching Simon Savage's video recently and he was talking about how he doesn't like blurbs, he doesn't read blurbs, they don't really like inform the way he chooses books and they can sometimes detract from what he wants to read and I could not disagree with that more. Love you Simon but like how how do you know any context at all for what the book is about if you don't read the blurb? I mean I guess I can understand not reading the big blurb but the baby blurb like the elevator pitch blurb the one sentence one you have to read that in a way to like know what you're getting into right? I don't know. How do you guys feel about blurbs? I like this cover too. I like using type in this kind of right up against the edge way. It's nice. And then by Riverhead, um, out by Riverhead they sent me the books of Jacob by Ola Tokresok, winner of the Nobel Prize in Literature. Uh, this is the writer of We Drive Your Bones Over the Plow of the Dead Bones. <laughs> Um, if that book is familiar to you at all. I know Kieran just put like, he just did like a big reading club, book club with this book with his uh, Discord members. And I wonder how they got on with it. It seems sweeping. <laughs> it seems sweeping. I love that Matthew Sharapa was like calling out um, book buzzwords and then like any book that's over 500 pages is automatically sweeping, right? Um, I actually have no context for what this is about. So let me read the baby blurb. Let me read that baby blurb. There is no baby blurb for this one. There's only the full blurb. Okay, so I think this is about... Set in the mid 18th century around unrest beginning to sweep Europe follows a young Jew of mysterious origins and as he arrives in a village in Poland. Okay, okay, I'm down. Um, if you've read this, let me know. Obviously, pretty intimidating for size alone, but I'm trying to be daring this year, you guys. I'm trying to read out of my comfort zone. That involves length. Then from Knopf, um, I got Night Crawling by Layla Motley. This is out in May. It sounds really good. I've heard, I've, heard, I've like seen some buzz generated for this book online already, um, which is always a positive thing to see. And I think this is a very striking cover, very graphic. A dazzling, unforgettable novel about a young black woman who walks the streets of Oakland and stumbles headlong into the failure of its justice system. A debut that announces a blazingly original voice. It's cool. I've never seen this on a, um, Proof before. First printing, 125,000. I wonder if other Knopf books have that on it. I don't see it. I don't see it from the other one I got here. Um, that's interesting. And then I got another proof of this. I was actually sent this before already from Scribner, so I'm definitely going to give this away to one of my friends. Um, but it's The Candy House by Jennifer Egan. She's the author of The Goon Squad. Um, and this is like a sibling novel to that. This is the Goon Squad. The Goon Squad has become kind of a cult classic. I actually haven't read it yet but I do own it and it's called an electrifying deeply moving novel about the quest for authenticity and meaning in a world where memories and identities are no longer private. I like that. Internet, AI, surveillance culture. Sounds good. Out in April. April 5th. Oh yeah, and then this book was sent to me. I'd never heard of this publisher before actually. Yeah, the Santa Fe Writers Project. Um, they reached out to me to send me this book and thought I would like it. And I do think I'm going to like it. Um, 
I love when sometimes publishers will reach out and have context for your reviews or your reading taste or like have watched your channels before and know the kind of books you like and this is one of them where it came with like a personalized note it was like hey you've read all of these books i think you're really gonna like this book too which i just think is a nice smart touch um especially for indie presses i know that takes a lot of legwork and time uh but it does always like you know touch me um this is a memoir by lily Dassinger, uh, blurbs by Carmen Maria Machado and T. Kira Madden, who is the author of Long Live the Tribe, A Father's Fatherless Girls. My internet friend Sujay actually gifted me a copy of that. Thank you again, Sujay. I'll link their channel down below if you want to watch them. New to booktube, but very smart and good. This follows um, Lily's childhood, her parents' struggle with addiction, uh, a journalist interrogation of her own rosy memories that had instability around the edges. That sounds incredible. Um, I love any memoir that recounts addiction in people's personal lives because it's something very close to my family line and my uh, own upbringing. So yeah, it's always interesting to read from other people's lived experiences. <laughs> the fucking dichotomy Amish justice. Um, by Beverly and Stan Jolie. I didn't catch that at the force at first, but Stan Jolie, I guess, was nominated for an Academy Award on Witness. So shout out to them. I'm really happy for them. Uh, my dad's reading choice. Then from Knopf, this is already out. This is Authority and Freedom, A Defense of the Arts by Jed Pearl. From one of our most widely admired art critics comes a bold and timely manifesto reaffirming the independence of all the arts, musical, literary, and visual, and their unique, unparalleled power to excite, disturb, and inspire us. Uh, he looks at Mozart, Michelangelo, Jane Austen, Henry James, Picasso, Aretha Franklin, and more. I think it's about art, its interpretation, how society rejects or affirms artistic voices. I'm excited. And then last, this is what I bought myself, um, my book of the month, the Choice is Vladimir by Julia Mae Jonas, who Jalen recently interviewed on his podcast. So if you haven't listened to that, please do. This is her debut novel about academia, a couple struggling in love maybe, affairs with a woman, like a woman having the affair. It's very rompy, very good, unputdownable, all the things you wanna hear about a book. So that's it. That's my very spoiled brat. Uh, most Mostly publisher given new book haul. I'm excited about all of those. And that was my Sunny's update too. Hope you're doing well. Let me know what you're reading. Let me know what you're excited about. I'm still playing Witchwood the video game and I'm thinking about buying the new Pokemon Arceus game. Let me know if you've played it and if it's fun. I'm tempted, but I don't really know if I want an open world Pokemon, you know? Okay, love you guys. Goodbye.